some of you entered the Air Force. The added thrust of rocket motors provided the same benefits then that are still required for today's heavy aircraft, including the venerable B-47. Safely installed rocket motors allow heavier payloads on limited runways, even with high ambient temperatures. You armament men in the audience may remember the early JATO systems and the problems they solved and the problems they created. JATO was and still is an explosive device that got and still gets a lot of operational use. The areas where safety is affected are a lot larger than with many other Air Force explosive devices. We have proof of that in the accident files of the Deputy Inspector General for Safety. In fact, these photographs on either side of me are from one of those files of privileged information. The sequence of events of this accident was caused by a breach of safety discipline. During takeoff, one of the JATO units exploded and punctured a fuel tank. Why it exploded cannot be precisely assessed. The results of the explosion can. A man for whom we had great attachment and who was irreplaceable lost his life. An aircraft that was a big part of our defense was demolished. And any man who saw it happen, who knew the men involved, either the men in the accident or the man who died, and the men who will never know if they were a part of the cause of it, all share a common sense of uneasiness that we call guilt feelings. Just looking at these pictures, I have them now, and I'm sure you have. Just as we both have vague feelings of importance, when we're associated with doing something well, even more so where there's a challenge involved. But I wonder what kind of feelings we have when we do something repeatedly and until it becomes boringly simple. Consider, for example, day after day loading of rocket motors. JATO. Exciting? Hardly. Challenge? You've done it a thousand times. You watch the other people, they watch you. You go by the loading procedures, step by step. You double-check each other. You could almost do it in your sleep. Except that you might wake up in the middle of a nightmare like this. So in reality, you do have a challenge. We all have this kind of challenge, and we call it safety. I'm going to show you some of the components of that challenge that apply whenever you're dealing with JATO. From the very beginning, remember, JATO is an explosive device. A rocket motor like this 16NS-1000 has exploded and caused damage and death. The 15KS-1000 has the same capacity for danger. It contains 90 pounds of perchlorate oxidizer and plastic resin fuel. The igniter is a nichrome wire embedded in black powder. For safety's sake, Consider the device a bomb. If its propellant becomes chipped or cracked, there can be fire or explosion when the propellant is ignited. If a JATO unit drops more than 12 inches or is roughly handled, put it in segregated storage and report it immediately to responsible authority. Reporting to and listening to responsible authority is a discipline that every military man accepts without question. It's a great basic component of safety. Safety discipline is not concerned with feelings of importance of individuals. It is not an ego device. It is concerned with rigorous compliance with simple step-by-step -step procedures. No rings, no watches, shoelaces tied. Safety looks out for the ground crew as well as the flight crew. And preventing small accidents focuses attention on preventing larger accidents. Attention to such small details like proper tools is another simple component of safety. But important. And nothing can be more important than a no-voltage check before you connect 30 powerful rocket motors to the aircraft electrical system. Stray voltage can come from almost anywhere. A nichrome wire buried in black powder has no power of selection. If enough voltage is present, the igniter will fire the rocket. 
The Jato trailer with its rack aboard weighs 5,400 pounds. When it's moving, it can mash a foot, or its inertia can gouge the fuselage. To prevent this happening, face forward and push. That places your feet parallel to the line of movement and allows you to watch the underside of the aircraft. Accidents have happened where crews facing to the rear pulled the trailer over their feet and fuselages have been gouged by the racks. A little more time spent in the careful alignment of the rack beneath the aircraft pays off in terms of less time needed to get the rack into position to lock it to the fuselage. Safety supervision in this area is a positive factor in decreasing the actual loading time. The execution and acceptance of good supervision is an impersonal but vital component of safety. Every step in the operation of locking the rack to the aircraft has to be supervised to guarantee the result of the weight check. The rack and its 30 rocket motors weighs more than two tons. Men can be crushed to death when there is error, indifference, or casual performance. A great component of the challenge of safety is the ability of the man in charge to take the long, slow look when danger is at its highest potential, whether the operation is mechanical, electrical, or mental. For example, double checks by supervisors are completely in order before rocket motors are electrically connected to the aircraft. Good supervision always places a crew member in a position of least possible risk. Even though the JATO arm and JATO fire switches are in the off position and both disconnect plugs are pulled, note the extreme caution used in connecting the igniter lead wires. The body is never exposed to the area at the rear of the rocket motors. Avoiding the hazard, however, does not keep the man from doing the job properly to assure positive ignition during takeoff. Two other men check his work. This component of safety is simply responsible authority exercising its right and responsibility to assure complete compliance with safe procedures. There's no beginning or ending to safety practices around explosive devices like JATO. There are tangible completions, the accomplishment of every step in a checklist to the mutual satisfaction of a team chief and a safety supervisor. All of these are great and good and completely necessary. But the tying together of all of the components of safety around explosive devices is accomplished by the human brain. There's no checklist for a man's attitude, no measure of a man's ability to cope with repetition day in and day out. No real measure of unintentional carelessness. No one in his right mind intends to be the cause of an accident, but even right minds can cause them. And every explosive device is potentially an accident waiting to happen. If you happen to be involved in handling or loading these devices, then your primary concern must be your attitude toward possible accidents. When you're in the middle of an accident, is the wrong time to form a safety attitude. And don't let the age of your equipment condition your thinking either. It's true, the aircraft you've seen in this film are getting on. But JATO is going to be around for a long time. For the C-130Bs, it's a brand new system. There's still useful life in a lot of B-47s, too. And in the office of the Deputy Inspector General for Safety, we're much concerned about your attitude toward extending that life and your own life. We know that your attitude toward life in general affects your work performance. We urge you to consider the importance of explosive device safety. And we want you to feel it's doubly important at all times when you're working in any connection with explosive devices like JATO. It's much easier to accept the disciplines of safety than to bear the terrible associations of being part of a serious, 
for a fatal accident. 